and we're back for another edition of Mahoney's House of Horrors. music alone you know we're doing Friday the 13th part 3 first I want to just apologize for the uh, the darkness uh, one of our lights went out in the background so um, you only want to hear me anyway so you see enough of me as, as it is so let's crack into it so Friday the 13th part 3 uh, it takes place um, the, the next day after um, part two and um it picks up right where you know a bunch of new kids are going to the higgins haven this time and they're uh, led by chris who uh has a past with higgins haven and uh i'll get to that in a second and with with her is you know they have um god brain fart um Chili and Chuck, um, and they have Shelly and Andy, and they're going to pick up Vera. And you know, Chris, uh, in the very beginning, already has like visions of, you know, she might see this and she might see that, and you know, they come across where um, Harold and um, Edna get killed. Oops, spoiler. Anyways, uh, it picks up after Harold and uh, Edna get killed, and um, she already starts th thinking about, you know, should she be back here? And you know, her friend Debbie's trying to tell her, you know, just don't drink, daydream, kiddo. Don't, you know, basically don't think the worst. And after they pick up uh, Vera. Um, you're, you're, you're introduced to the whole cast there. You know, Vera's kind of the tease uh, who has to, who is her blind date is Shelly and Andy and Debbie. Uh, I think they're the best couple in this whole, uh, not in the whole series, but they're definitely a top couple. And um, then you have, obviously, Chris and uh, Chuck and Chili. And right when they get there, you're introduced to uh, Rick, and you know you automatically you, you see. I, to me, I don't think you see much chemistry between Rick and uh, Chris. You know, supposedly Rick's an old boyfriend, and he gives up his his uh, time away from Mary Jo Conrad. And, uh, you know, he kind of, maybe he kind of wishes he stayed there, because, um, I'll get into Chris later, but, um, if anybody's watched the, uh, Banana Lays, no, Skeleton Crew, Skeleton Crew, did, um, a Friday the 13th, part three, and, um, you, they tell, they asked me to do a little thing on, uh, my review of Friday the 13th, so if you've seen that already, you see how I feel about uh, Chris Higgins. So, um, but I'll get into it. For those who haven't gotten 
I seen, have been listening to that. I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so, some strong points of this um, particular uh, part three. And we're going to start with the background cast. Uh, like I've already mentioned about Shelly, Andy, Debbie. I, I think Debbie's a very strong supporting character of Chris. Trying to keep Chris under control. And, you know, it's... <sighs> Oh, here it is, by the way. Uh, episode 103, Skeleton Crew. Anyways, uh, De Debbie is a great character. I think Chuck and Chili might be my favorite pair. They might not be the uh, like the lovey-dovey couple, but, I mean, they totally fit each other. I, I think I, I qu was quoted um, by saying they were like the Cheech and Chong of the series. And... Yeah, you know, just different parts between them smoking in the van and uh, the part with uh, Chuck trying to catch the popcorn in his mouth. I I think that's hilarious. Um, also, Shelly I think is a, a fantastic Shelly. Shelly's an iconic character because mm -hmm. you know as you find out later, Shelly is the one responsible for Jason having the iconic mask. Um, also, um, the killings, I also mentioned about the killings that have nothing to do with Higgins Haven. Um, Vera goes into town, <coughs> and, um, uh, Shelly goes with her, and they, they run into the, the biker gang of Crystal Lake, and, uh, that's Fox, Loco, and, uh, whew, I'm having another brain fart, and Ali. And, uh, you know, they're kind of bullied in the store, and, um, so after, you know, Shelly kind of tries to get revenge in, in honor of Vera trying to win po brownie points with her, and, you know, he, he knocks over their bikes, and, I did it, and, you know, he's all happy about it, thinking this is gonna get him, you know, some, uh, points with, uh, Some points with uh, Vera. I hear a cricket in here. Anyways, <clears throat> going back, so uh, you know the the bikers go after Shelly, and they they try to, you know, rumor has it they were gonna burn down the barn as revenge. So you know they uh, siphon the the gas out of the the car and. Um, you know, you see, uh, Fox go into the barn, and, you know, um, Loco follows, and it's like, you know, Ali's gonna uh, kill you if he finds out you're, you're messing around, and, and, of course, you know, none of them come out alive, you know, they didn't, I mean, yeah, you, you kinda are glad when they are gone, but they had nothing to do with, you know, being a hidden haven, they just happened to be in the wrong place, wrong time. So, I, but I think that's a great little thing to add because a lot of the movies you only get to see the kids who go there that get killed, or maybe like someone is trying to warn them, like in part one and two, Crazy Ralph. But, um, but you know, it was it was a a good uh, thing to bring in outsiders and, and have them to be victims too. Um, let's see what else did I write down? Chuck and Chili. I wrote down my little notes here. Chuck and Chili. I, I went into it a little bit already. Fantastic comic relief. Uh, and then the jokes are still funny today. Uh, the, their, their zaniness. They're clowning around. And it's like, you know, you don't actually see any either one serious until you see uh, uh, Chili find... Uh, what she thinks is Shelly playing dead again, like he's done through the whole movie, and then you see it finally, like, oh my god, like, oh shit, um, let's see, what else, uh, the music, the musical score of Harry Manfredini, um, once again, spot on, um, I love the little disco thing in the beginning, that's, that was a complete twist from part one and two, um, I think he moves it along really good. 
Uh, it's not quite as good as 1 and 2, but it's good for the movie that it's part of. You know, being with 3D, he had to, he had to spice it up a little bit and do something different. So, you know, kudos to him. Um, the background story behind Chris. Now, I, I think I, I delved into it a little bit earlier. I liked the little story. Um, basically, they're saying that she was the first one ever to encounter Jason after, you know, uh, that Jason was found alive. And um, that kind of feeds into my theory that Jason never really died. And, you know, you, you see how disfigured he is and you see so you know obviously he hasn't been, t been taken care of and it's is and it goes into saying that you know that's why he had the cabin you know he he saved himself he made he found a place Casa Ella Jason <laughs> and uh, you know Chris just happened to be the first one to run into him and yeah, you know, she got away. Um, like she said, she doesn't remember anything besides that, besides running into him. Um, let's get into some bad points. So, um, bad point number one. Sorry, Brian Bennett. Um, Dana Kimmel. Now, I, I do respect that she is one of the uh, final survivors. And for the most part, I do like uh, some of the things. But I think of all the leading ladies, I think she, to me, she's one of the weaker ones. Always. Uh, she wasn't as independent, I think, as um, Jenny was. Yeah, Jenny... You know, she told you what she thought Jason was. She and she she fought back. She didn't ask for anyone's help. And Dana is more of a I need someone to help me. Yeah, she did good fighting back against Jason, but I think there was too much um, whining and not enough um, female strength there. I could be wrong. Uh, you know, feel free to tell me if you disagree. Uh, leading man, also, um, Rick. Um, I I honestly think that Rick was miscast. The guy who plays Rick, uh, Paul Katra, looks like he's almost thirty. Um, and everyone else here is supposedly like in there teens maybe early 20s and we're, we're to believe that he he's Chris's on and off on and off again boyfriend I, like I said that chemistry to me is terrible Rick's a, kind of a dick in the movie like you know he almost wants to take off on her and it's he's not patient because this is the first time Chris has been back since the attack you know it's I know he doesn't really know about it, but later on he's even kind of like, whatever, you know. Um, Abel. Abel, I thought, also was a, a sad version of Crazy Ralph. Um, if they wanted another Crazy Ralph, A, they should have kept the original one alive for one more movie. Or B, gone off in a different direction, maybe... Maybe a late, an older lady, you know, warning about, kind of like what they did with Friday Thirteenth the remake. Um, but Abel, you know, you see him on the side of the road. They almost hit him. The, looks like my grandpa. I mean, he's only in one scene, and he's holding an eyeball. And um, I, I just don't think it. They should a given him more time. Or b just kept crazy Ralph. Or c had someone different play, like a girl or like an older lady, to to play the the, the crazy role. Because they just basically rehashed a poor man's crazy Ralph. Um. Th 
the 3D. The 3D, um, I got to see, yes, I got to see it in the theater, and it was fantastic. Um, but the transfer to VHS and DVD is, I mean, uh, yeah, they came out with the glasses, but it's, it's not the same. It's, um, it makes the movie more cheesy than it has to be. Um, I guess, you know, some people like the cheese, but, you know, like the part where he's, you know, the pole with, it's, it, it doesn't work at all. It's, it's, it's a bad conversion. For, so, um, I can't read my writing. <laughs> oh, worst ending. Worst ending might be harsh. Bad ending, baby. Um, you know, part one, they had Ari jumping out of the lake. Great. Part two, they had uh, Jason jumping through the window. Great. Now you're you're trying to throw in a, a dead mother jumping out of a lake. Um... I would have preferred the the ending that they were gonna go with, and that was the um, the beheading of Chris. <laughs> I think that would have been great, but um, <laughs> sorry, Dana fans, I'm sorry that I'm so harsh on her, but uh, anything would have been better than a um, Mrs. Voorhees jumping out of the lake. First of all, she's dead. Second of all, they didn't use Betsy Palmer. Uh, third of all, uh, she is decrepit with, you know, all the the shit from the lake, and I think it 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 feels horribly. I'm sorry, it feels horribly. Um. So, you know. I, you, you, you might think I'm being harsh on this one. This is actually one of my favorites. Uh, there's just some things I could have done without. But there's more things I loved. Uh, I, I think, like I said, the musical score is great. I love how Manfredini had to mix it up. And, you know, I think uh, Steve Miner does, once again, a great job. Uh, and... Uh, who also, I, I'm going to give some, some credits out here. Um, I loved uh, Gloria Charles' Fox. Great role. Um, David Kadams, Chuck, and obviously Rachel Howard Chili. Um, I can hear all the, the uh, Chili fans out there parading around right now. Um, <clears throat> Catherine Parks was great. And one of my, be my favorite kills, by the way, is Catherine. Catherine Parks, maybe she deserved to die after how she kind of, you know, dish Shelley. Uh, the arrow through the eye. Fantastic. Um, also, um, Larry Zerner as Shelley. Once again, fantastic. And I gotta give it up to Richard Brooker. Probably one of my favorite Jasons. That's what makes this movie fantastic. You know, last one had Steve Dash and uh, Warrington Gillette for like one, two scenes. But, you know, this one, um, Richard Brooker really brings, I mean, he really brings Jason to life. That scene when he walks out with the, the spear gun. I mean, I, I don't think there's a person who, who, when they first saw that movie, didn't have chills in their spine. Seeing him walk out with the mask. Um, and, um, <coughs> one more uh, shout out to, uh, I think Jeffrey Rogers is good too. And Tracy Savage, what I mentioned earlier, Tracy Savage, his Debbie was great. So I think the supporting cast saves this movie. Um, Jason saves this movie. And Harry Manfredini saves this movie. Because uh, it could have been worse. So I'm, I'm going to give this one a 
uh, big time 4.5 stars and um, uh, we'll see you next week on Friday the 13th part 4 the final chapter